Hi, Hannah. Yeah, we started week three of the Murdoch trial here in Colleton County today. Attorney Joe McCullough joining me now. And Joe, obviously, there was a lot that happened in court today. At points, was kind of confusing. We want to start Judge Newman saying he'll allow some of these financial crimes to be brought in. Your takeaway of that today? Well, that was a huge uh, break for the prosecution that that evidence comes in. Yeah. It's controversial. Um, it's evidence that is allowed according to the judge's ruling because the it's more probative than prejudicial based upon the establishment of a motive. Though the state has not told us how killing your family somehow is related to the financial crimes or the discovery of those crimes. I mean, it's hard to believe that Murdoch believed that if he killed his family that his financial crimes would never be discovered, but that's the state's theory. So that was, that's a big deal and that's going to take another two days of witnesses. You know, Joe, at lunchtime a, a juror raised the question of, you know, maybe not wanting to be here. He was concerned about how long this trial is going to take. So let's talk about that. The financial crimes now is going to add some time to this. How does it affect this trial? Oh, I think it's going to add another several weeks to this trial. Um, the, the rulings uh, by the judge allow evidence. There's been uh, very little in, in terms of rulings that exclude evidence. And, and it was interesting at the end of today, after a long time spent on this blue jacket and what significance it had, uh, the judge seemed in this colloquy right at the end of the day uh, to ask, he asked the uh, defense to reiterate their objections, uh, whether he's re reconsidering or not is not very clear, but the state's already got a toe in that water, and, and that's another big, big deal for them. You know, obviously, we've been talking throughout this trial about different aspects, but it seems, or at least the defense is setting up this opportunity to file an appeal, regardless of how this, you know, turns out at the end. I don't know if you want to touch on that at all, but it seems like they're kind of establishing that. Well, I don't know that they're setting it up. I think when you defend a criminal case, you're always uh, cognizant of the fact of, of appellate issues. Uh, I think they still believe that there's uh, reasonable doubt all over the landscape, but they're playing a short game, that is, trying this case every day, and the long game. They're accumulating uh, what they believe to be appellate issues, and, and the more of those there are, the better the likelihood of a, of a new trial. But, of course, we're a long way from a verdict, and, and if there's a hung jury or a not guilty verdict, which I think seems remotely possible, uh, but probably not. Um, there are two ways the defense doesn't have to appeal. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. We'll send it back to you guys in studio live in Colt County. Riley Benson, count on two.